I'm going to show you the whole process to make a booklet in laid out. This particular one is going to be like this. It's a nice little square format. It's folded in the middle, stapled, uh, made out of American tabloid size, which is 11 inches by 17 inches. It's chopped twice out of the tabloid size paper and then stapled. So how do we achieve this magical feat? Basically what we're going to do is define a booklet in position and then dump a whole bunch of images into it. So in laid out, uh, select the you can select the default booklet definition, which doesn't have any margin areas defined, so we'll have to do that. Then bring up that editor, we're going to make it tabloid size, and cut twice. Then with the folds, now we define this, the margin area. Let's make it about a quarter inch on all sides. You can hold down shift and control to modify the precision of your dragging, by the way. Then for the binding edge, uh, I usually make this a little bit larger, that margin area a little bit larger, uh, so that images don't get sucked into the, the stapling. So now when we go to import images in a little bit, it's going to import into this margin area. Uh, we can set it to scale up or scale down, as you'll see. So press OK, create document. So now we have a, a document that is just blank pages, uh, and we want to dump our images into there. So let's see, select all of these images in this one directory. There's a couple duplicates in here, so I can hold control and deselect those duplicate ones. All right, so let's see what that does. I wonder if that page or order will still be the same since I've tinkered with it. Uh, then, as I mentioned before, you can scale up or scale down those images to fit within that margin area. Uh, it's going to be one per page. Uh, if you scale up and scale down, it ignores the default DPI. You can also change the alignment of how things are going to sit inside that margin area. So, for instance, if you had little page number images to go in the pages, uh, you could select, like, tell us to be left, bottom. Uh, and change the alignment per type of page. But for these images, they're just going to go in the center. So it's scaling up, scaling down. Uh, let's import all of those now. Let's see what happens. So now we have the about the author. is uh, That should go at the end, so we'll have to rearrange that. Uh, this thing is sort of an errant one, which I can delete for now. Then that's actually the cover, so uh, it's sort of here but the order is slightly off. Otherwise, the page order appears to be correct. The story seems to flow more or less the way it's supposed to anyway. So all right, uh, how do we adjust those pages now? You can use the spread editor, which I've been working on lately. Uh, see, let's view these in a more comfortable grid. Uh, so now we've got these uh, light gray ones. There's no actual document pages for those sections, but when you print out a piece of paper in booklet, uh, those are going to be empty spaces, so we'll get to that in a second. So this about the author has to go at the end. When you click and drag in here, if, if something is circled in red, then it means that uh, uh, the page is out of order from the do document page order. To correct that, you have to hit apply, and then it'll show up in your page viewer window. Uh, so what other changes do we need to do? The cover needs to go at the front, so let's move that there. And this thing is actually the title page. That's got to go there. Then whenever you're dragging, it's just simply shifting the other pages around. So now those three are out of order from the original order. We want to apply those changes. When you do that, it updates the thumbnails for the pages also. So now, what about those extra pages there? What's going on there? Uh, one thing is that after the title page, I want to have the next page be blank so that the actual story page starts on, uh, on the right side of the book as you're holding it. So let's start, insert one page before that, put a blank one in there. Then these two pages at the end and these two at the front, those are part of the cover stock. So that's going to be printed on sort of a thicker kind of paper. Uh, and on the inside cover, I want that to be blank just for simplicity. Uh, 
So in here, we're going to add two more pages after that, so one page after another page after. So now the page order is all set. Oh, by the way, sometimes you're working on stuff and you want to and you want to mark ones that are done. So for instance, you could select all of them, click on this number. Uh, you could uh, make them gray for not done or yellow for needs attention or something. And then as you get done with them, you can change the markers so that they're they're plain white. So that now when you go through the page by page view, uh, the ones that are done are white, the ones that need attention are, are yellow. Uh, and then finally, when you're all done, you can make them all white if you want. Just kind of, it's useful to be able to keep track of stuff like that, I find. So now, uh, what's this final blank page on the back? That's not very pleasant. So let's go to the final page there. Uh, I usually have kind of a generic back page for most of my books. Let's import that one. It's just going to be a single image. Uh, the date is wrong though, so it just has tiny thumbnails of some other books that I've done. So uh, there was one other image that was just April something something, the actual date of the book, April 2010. So let's just import that one. And we can just place that one on top of the other so that it pretends that it's there. All right, so now the pages should be all set. You can look, look at the paper view here. You can either view them as single pages or as reader spreads, how you would how they would appear as you're reading the book, or as the printer spreads the stuff that you take to your printer. Uh, we can double check the cover to make sure that there's printing on this side, which is, uh, I usually print for my nightlife books, it's usually like a light gray or something. And page two of that is all blank, which is exactly what we want. And then all the other pages uh, seems to be all set up. So now the final step is just printing and, and taking to your printer. Uh, printing and laid out is pretty, pretty flaky. Usually uh, I will export to either PDF or Scribus or sometimes SVG and then use Inkscape or Scribus or Events or something to, to print. Uh, they usually have much better output options and different optimization settings that Layout has not implemented as yet. Anyway, uh, that's it. Easy to do. Uh, print it all out, chop it up, stable it, and you're all done. Piece of cake.